welcome back to the 43rd Ryder Cup here at Whistling Straits. We are joined by Roy McElroy. Uh, Roy, welcome to your sixth career Ryder Cup. Um, uh, six, this is your sixth straight, so you've been on the scene for a decade, a decade of great prosperity for Europe. Um, maybe one thing in that decade that you've been around that's um, changed or evolved, and maybe one thing that, that hasn't changed and you hope never does. Um, yeah, I mean, I think as, as the Ryder Cup has evolved, I think it's become, um, bigger, I guess, every year as it becomes more, I mean, I, I thought last time in France and, you know, the size of that grandstand on the first tee and the, the grandness of it all, it definitely felt like that was the biggest yet. Um, and then, you know, in terms of things that haven't changed for us as Europe. I mean, you know, we've, you know, there's a lot of continuity in our team and, and I think that's been part of the reason for our success. And, you know, that's something that I hope never changes because, you know, it's, it's, it's worked very well for us. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the, the Ryder Cup epitomizes everything that's great in the game of golf. You know, it's, it's competitive, um, but there's also a lot of sportsmanship showing um, and obviously there's partisan crowds and all of that, but that's, you know, that's, that's part of being in a, in a team environment. Um, you know, you're going to have a majority of the crowd, majority of the crowd rooting for one team or the other. And, um, I guess that's not something we get to experience every, uh, every day. Um, so yeah, I mean, Ryder Cup is, you know, it's, it's one of the best best events that we have in golf, if not the best event we have in golf, and um, just excited to be a part of another one. It's good to have you here. Uh, let's start right here, number 20, with Neil. Uh, hi, Rory. Uh, with um, yourself and so many of your teammates um, spending uh, a lot of your lives over here, does it make it any, any less of an away game, or will it be particularly away game style this time with the... Uh, very few fans from Europe. Yeah, um, I don't think so. I think if anything that has evolved over the years with the Ryder Cup is the the European the European team and the and the and the U.S. team are probably um, closer as you know than they ever have been individually. Um, you know, we all spend a lot of time over here. We play predominantly on the PGA Tour, um, so there is a part of that, but. Um, it's still, you know, you know, you're on the. I mean, red. There's a sea of red everywhere here. It's, you know, it's, it's just it. It feels like an American Ryder Cup. Um, but you know, then again, I, you know, I haven't been here in a few years, and you, you, you first look at the golf course again, and you, you, you it, it seems somewhat familiar, and it, it seems, um, it doesn't look like a typical American golf course. So. Whether that makes a difference or not, it's, uh, that's to be seen. But, um, I, I, you know, I said this in a few of the interviews before this week. I don't feel like um, playing away is getting any easier. If anything, it's probably getting a little tougher. Let's go to number 21 here. Hey, Rory, a little bit of the same topic. Uh, the Americans obviously play for America. If you're Team Europe... There's a lot of countries there. What, what's kind of the rallying point that brings you all together? We play for each other. I think that's the, the best thing that you can do. Um, you play for the guys that are beside you. You play for everyone that's helping our team try to win this week. You're obviously playing for your country and your continent and I guess your tour in some way as well. Um, but most of all, we play for each other. Dan, 24. Rory, the, the Ryder Cup could have over here. Rory. Oh, sorry. The, the Ryder right. Cup could have maybe been played last year, but that would have likely meant no fans. I, I know this isn't a away game for you this week, but what does it mean to have the fans here, and what role do they play in this event? Yeah, I just think it makes it a greater spectacle. And, and you know, there were talks of having the Ryder Cup last year with, with limited fans or no fans, and you know, my, my argument was it, it, it wouldn't be a Ryder Cup at all. Um, that's not, I don't think either team, it probably would have been to the European team's benefit to, to not have, um, to not have that, but, um, 
it, it's it's not a Ryder Cup then. So it's great to have fans back. It's great that um, it's funny when the the Ryder Cup was cancelled last year. I still didn't imagine that we'd be doing this, and everyone would still be in masks. And I mean, things went on for far too long. But um, happy we're here, and we're um, happy to be playing. All right, let's go to number one, Scott. Rory, typically you're one of the top-ranked uh, Europeans on this thing. Do you have you ever felt a leadership burden when you come to the Ryder Cup, or do you defer to some of the guys like Poulter and Sergio and Westwood who have been here even more often than you? And is it something that maybe you will have to take on as an elder statesman, so to speak, as the Ryder Cup goes on? Yeah, I think I've already tried to evolve into that role. Um, you know, have, you know, this being my sixth Ryder Cup. Um, 2014, I felt like was was the year that I um, embraced the role of being a a leader, um, and then you know going on from then. Um, but yeah, I think that's one of the great things about the European European team. It's not as if we're just looking to one guy or one. You know, there's a, there's a collection of um, very experienced players there that that some of the the younger guys and the rookies can look at and. Um, and then you look at our vice captains as well, and you look at all the uh, the pivotal roles that they've played in Ryder Cups over the years. So um, we have no shortage of leaders on our team. Let's go to Mark on four. Hey, Rory. I'm just curious what's your impression of what Pulse and Sergio and Lee have done, the, the longevity, the success, and what, what's your level of respect that they, you know, and what they've meant to this team over these years? It's amazing. Um, you look at someone like Lee Westwood, for example, um, partnered Nick Faldo in 97. When it was Faldo's last Ryder Cup, it was his 11th. You know, fast forward, you know, however many years it is, and now Lee's playing his 11th Ryder Cup. Um, so I think that's one of the cool things about it is it, it does come full circle. And, you you know, we, we have this thing this week where um, we've all been given a player number. So there's been 164 players that have played for the European Ryder Cup team, or GB and I, you know, way back in the day. You know, so that's a pretty small, small group of players. Um, I'm number 144. I think Lee's number 118. But then you just look at all the players before you, and you look at Bernd Wiesberger, who's making his debut this year, who's a number 164. Like it's a small collection of people that have played for played for Europe in the Ryder Cup and I think that's what brings us very close together and, and that's been one of our um, sort of big uh, focus points this week is just you know being here is very special and being part of a, a European team and um, you know, very few people can can call themselves a, a European Ryder Cup player. So idea, was that was that Patty's idea yeah. of the numbering? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then he, he sort of he, he played a video for us last night to put it into con context 570 people have been into space. Um, I think over 5,000 people have climbed Everest. 225 have won a, a men's major. You know, so when you sort of break it down like that, you know, it's it's a pretty small group and it's it's pretty cool. Sure. Right, we're going to beam out for a question from afar. Here's Herman uh, Fulvik. Herman, you're up, sir. Thank you. Uh, from uh, Vega in Norway. Uh, you had your debut in uh, Ryder Cup when you were only 20 year old. Year old. Uh, Victor Hovland is now uh, 24. What's your best advice to uh, such a young player uh, like Victor before uh, this big competition? I mean, I think the thing that I'd say to any rookie is the reason you're on this team is because of the golf that got you here. Um, I mean, for Victor, I just tell him to be himself. I mean, he's one of the best players in the world. Um, he's already, you know, been a wonderful teammate and, and, you know, the, the energy and the enthusiasm that he brings into our team. Um, so for Victor, I just get out on the golf course, be himself, play his game. And that's more than good enough to, to win points for the European team. We're going back left for you, Rory, number 25. Rory, in your opinion, is the PGA Tour player of the year on team Europe or team USA? Um, I don't care. I just care I'm on the winning team this week. Uh, can I ask another one back yeah, here? Go ahead. You, you made the point that Europe plays for each other. Do you think the American team struggles with that? 
No, I mean, I was just sort of, from my perspective, being part of a, a team for, for now six of these things, I'm just speaking from a personal perspective and, and what I've seen from the, from the European team. We're going to go straight back here, number 23. Rory? I, I, I may be wrong, but I think, I think you've developed a bit of an interest in, um, in boxing, and I think you've met Anthony, haven't you? Um, yeah. I just wondered if you'd had any communication with him, because obviously he's got a very big night for him Saturday, and whether you've had any exchanges with him in the build-up to your big weekend and his big weekend? Uh, no, because the last time I saw him, he was doing his camp in Miami, and then he went up to New York and didn't have a great night. So, um, But, yeah, no, it's a big night for him. Um, pretty big test. I mean, Usyk looks like a really good fighter. Uh, I'll hopefully... Unless I'm rested on Saturday afternoon, I'll hopefully be on the golf course, so I won't be able to watch it. But um, yeah, wishing him all the best and all the luck. He's, um, I think, what how he conducts himself and how he represents himself on the sport of boxing is, um, you know, he's you know talking about leadership and talking about doing the right thing. You know, he's the epitome of that. We're gonna go for a couple straight in the back right, eleven and then twelve. Eleven, please. Hi, Rory. Um, the last time we saw you uh, playing Ryder Cup I in America was probably as animated as we've ever seen you on a golf course. Do you think you need to uh, tap into that same level of energy and the fact that it's an uh, almost exclusively American crowd, will that help you that cause? Yeah, I, don't, like, um, I certainly will try to not be as animated and I'll, I'll try to conserve some energy. Uh, it's a long week, you know, and... and you know, whether I play all five again, you know, we'll see. But um, it's a lot of golf. It's a lot of energy just playing. Um, and then, you know, trying to to, to beat who you're playing against. Um, you know, if you try to, to beat the crowd as well, it, it seems like a bit of a impossible task. So, um, you know, I will try my best for this team and I'll try to play the best golf I possibly can. Um, but I sort of learned quite a few things from 2016 um, about conserving energy. And, you know, I felt like I, I sort of hit a wall on the back nine against Patrick that day. And, you know, I, I want to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Was that the most animated you've, you've been, do you think, and the most uh, pumped up? Even yeah, I mean, I think the most animated I've been in, um, in, in my career has been at Ryder Cups. I mean, uh, it's, you know, it just brings something out of you that... Um, you don't get playing individually. You know, there's something, something more there when you're when you're playing as part of a team, and, and everything you do doesn't just affect yourself, but affects the other 11 players, the captain, the vice captains, all the support teams. So, um, yeah, it's uh, you know, there, there's a lot of a lot of emotion that that comes out, but you you still have to try to control that as well. Okay, we have time for two quick ones, 12 first, and then we'll come um, over here. Yeah, just in the context of what you were saying about the Ryder Cup getting bigger and getting harder to win away, uh, if Europe could get over the line, what would that mean in the context of your career? What, what, how big an achievement would that be? Uh, it, would be it would be massive. Um, I think you know, winning any Ryder Cup is, is huge, and it's a monumental achievement for all that are, that are involved. But I think over the years, winning a Ryder Cup on the road has just become more meaningful for some reason. Um, we experienced it in 2012, um, which from a European perspective is probably one of the best days in the Ryder Cup that we've ever had in history. Um, and I'd certainly love to, to have that feeling again. So, um, yeah, it's a, I think it would be a huge achievement, especially, you know, you look at, obviously this, this tournament isn't played on paper, it's played on grass, but you, on paper you would, you know, you look at the the world rankings and everything. Um, you know, we're coming in here as underdogs with with a lot of things um, stacked against us. So I think that would make it even you know even more of an achievement. And wrap it up here at six. Yeah, Rory. Just being here at the the end of the PGA Tour season, I was just wondering your confidence level with your own game right now, and and just if there's anything specifically that you're focused on. Um. I feel good. Played well the last few weeks. Um, led led this season in birdies made on the PGA Tour, birdie percentage. So you know, usually that works out pretty well in match play. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm feeling good. Should we expect to see you wearing hats this week? 
Um, they made some for me, so that's a start. Uh, so I've got some that fit. Maybe, I don't know, it's sort of become my thing in the Ryder Cup to not wear a hat, but um, I don't know, we'll see. All right, we'll wait with bated breath. Roy, thank you for finding us, and uh, have a terrific day. Thanks, guys. We are very pleased to be joined by Victor Hovland. Victor, welcome to your first Ryder Cup. Um, so as a first-time Ryder Cupper, how comforting is it to be in a team room with so much vast experience, not only in golf, but especially in this competition? Yeah, uh, obviously it's a, it's a very big stage, and you know kind of what it means to people. So I, that's why I think it's extra comforting when you get into a team room and you have not only – uh, veteran players, but also vice captains and, and captains. So I feel like just the, the whole support team and, and the, the players and everyone around it just have so much experience that, um, you know, they're, they're having fun, but at the same time, they're very uh, at ease. And that, I think that kind of rubs on not only me, but also the, the rookies and, and uh, just makes everyone feel, feel a lot better. All right, let's hit the floor for some questions. We'll start out with Neil at 20. Uh, Victor, how do you see your role in, in the team room specifically this week? Is it to watch and listen, or, or are you actively trying to contribute something particular there? Uh, that's a good question. I haven't really thought much about that. that. Um, you know, this is my first Ryder Cup, and uh, I'm, I'm only 24 years old, and um, kind of what I'm trying to do this week is just play as well as I can and try to be myself. I'm not trying to be anyone else. Um, and just try to get to know the people on the team, um, you know, well. I, I think we're already off to a good start. We've only been here for 24 hours, and, um, you know, our chemistry is, is good. So I just try to learn as much as I can from, you know, the, the guys that have been there, you know, five, six, seven, seven times. I mean, it's uh, I have so much so much experience, and I'm just trying to, um, yeah, be around it. I should point out to those joining us from afar that we will do some questions in his native tongue, in Victor's native tongue, in, in a few minutes. So we'll get to you. Uh, next question will go to number 21. Hey, Victor, do you have any, um, you know, childhood memories of watching this event on TV and thinking, uh, yeah, I want to be a part of that, that's cool, you know, that kind of thing? Yeah, the, the first Ryder Cup that I actually – you know, sat down and watched uh, to the end. Essentially, was uh, was at Medina. Um, you know, I wasn't wasn't too young, but um, I remember a lot of those uh, those final putts coming down the stretch uh, very vividly. And I was sitting there watching with my dad, and and I remember just going nuts. So uh, there's a, there's a lot of really good memories. Um, you know, from then and every every single Ryder Cup after that, I've been. Uh, been playing paying close attention um and as well as just playing college golf in the united states you know being a part of a team and playing for something bigger than yourself it, it's uh I, I don't think it gets any any better than that victor we're going to go back right for you number 11 in the back right Hi, victor um first couple of things uh, was it an eye-opening moment for you when you first linked up with the team something that took you completely by surprise not really. Um, I'd say kind of when we just created the the group text that we we have together. Uh, you know, that was just one of the the first things that made everything kind of sink in. You know, while we're we're playing the Ryder Cup next week, um, and I, I just you know remember just you know really looking forward to to meeting up with the guys here and and uh, just spending a lot of time together. Um, you know, it's not what we do, but just being together and just talking about nothing and anything you know I, th I think that's really really cool um you know I'm, I'm being around players that I've watched compete in the Ryder Cup since I, I was very very young and it's uh it's uh, an honor to be a part on on the team you said that uh it's it is a bit of an eye opener for you at 24 can you imagine what it was like for Sergio at 19 and then at the other end of the scale you've got Lee Westwood at twice your age yeah it's <laughs> uh it's crazy um you know they they bring so so much history into into this event and uh you know those guys are a couple of the guys that the reason why this tournament is what it is because they've they've 
brought so much passion and blood, sweat, and tears into this event that it, you know, it makes it so much more special to be on, on the team and even the same te- team as them. So, um, yeah, it's uh, when you put it into perspective like that, it, it's, uh, it's, it's really cool. Victor, front left with Jeff at 19. Victor, you'll be listed as a rookie this week, but you have some nice success in match play. What, what do you like about the format? And, and secondly, uh, if you were to play with or pair with Rory this week, do you feel you'd mesh pretty well with him? Uh, I think so. Uh, I think we got a lot of the, the same strengths and, and kind of personality-wise, we, we, we think a lot alike. Um, I've uh, grown up in, in Europe, we play tons of match play and we play tons of foursomes and, and uh, miscellaneous events. So uh, I have some experience doing that and I, I very much like it. Um, you know, I, I like to compete with someone and be on a team. So uh, for me, when you get a, a person that you mesh well with, um, it's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, obviously playing in the NCAAs in, in college and US Amateur, I, I've I've got some experience playing match uh, match play, and I'd say some of my best golf has been played in, in that format. So, um, you know, it's all about getting comfortable, and you get a, a couple putts going, and you get momentum. It's uh, it's uh, nothing nothing is uh, much more fun than doing that in match play. Over here on your right, number eight. Hey, Victor. Uh, I know you can't name names, but I'm curious. Do you feel like right now you know who you're going to play with and maybe when you're going to play on Friday? Or is that still something that you feel like is to be determined? Uh, it's uh, still to be determined. Um, you know, as we all do, we we say who we want to play with, and then we just kind of use these days to figure out, okay, is this a good fit or not? Do we work together? And then we kind of go from there. Um, other than that, I I don't really know. Uh, we're going to go to number four, Mark. Hey, Victor. Um, I just wonder if you could please expand a little bit on your your level of respect and, and uh, for the veteran guys, the particular guys, Lee, Sergio, and Poults, in terms of what these guys have done over the years in this competition, and you being in your first, thinking about Lee in his 11th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's crazy. I, I probably don't have uh, enough respect as I, as I should have, but um, you know, they're just you know, you look at their records, how many events they've won, uh, not just in Europe, not just in the United States. You know, worldwide, they've won so many events. And then obviously, time and time again, when they show up to this week, they uh, they deliver every single time. Um, you know, just uh, you know, I sat a couple weeks ago and and just watched you know, highlights of, of Poults and Sergio and, and Westy on YouTube and the Ryder Cup. And, you know, it's just uh, so cool to see all the clutch moments they've had and and uh, just kind of how they handle everything, you know, because it's, uh, it's a big pressure. And uh, just to see how they go about their business um, and, and handle all of that. I think that's also why it's cool to be, you know, behind the scenes with them, you know, when there's no cameras and they're not playing go- golf to kind of see, you know, why they've been able to, to do all those things. Okay, we're going to do three quick ones in English and then we'll switch uh, languages. We'll start with Damon, number seven. Victor, it seems like the European Ryder Cup competitors, whether they're rookies or, or veterans, they seem to have this in their blood from an early age. What's your earliest recollection of the Ryder Cup? When did it become something that you paid attention to and that was important to you? Yeah, the, the 2012 uh, Ryder Cup was, was kind of the first one that I, I watched the whole thing, essentially. And, uh, I mean, just watching that as a European, that, that gets your, your heart going. Um, you know, so I, I think that was kind of the big part of, of um, you know, making the Ryder Cup one of my dreams to, to play in. And, um, you know, it's just the – it's just all in all, it's they're obviously great players that play on these teams, but they're also great people. Um, and, and I think, and as soon as you're just in that environment, you just you just want to be part of it. Um, and, and you know, you it, it's easier to play for something bigger than yourself when you all you know like who you're with. So I, I think that's a big part of it, and obviously just the um, you know just the tradition of it. Let's go one on two and then Scott on one. 
So, Victor, you, you've been playing in the U.S. for a while, I mean, in college and then PGA Tour. You kind of have a fan base, if you want, no? or people <laughs> that root for you. So, and you are not the only one in your team that will be in a situation this week where you're going to have a lot of people rooting against you. So, how do you prepare yourself for that? Or do you have mental exercises that you do? I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'd like to think I have some fans out there that maybe <laughs> won't necessarily boo against us, but... Um, you know, if if they do end up doing that, you know that's that's uh, that's what they're gonna do. Uh, we're still gonna play golf, and if they do end up doing that, that that means we're we're doing something good. So um, I, I'm not gonna take anything too personally. Um, you know, I can I could take a punch to the face. I uh, I've uh, definitely got my uh, my beating so far in the group text. So um, you know, I think I'm prepared for for some some yells here and there. Scott. Victor, I'm curious who, other than uh, Padraig, is the most active voice on that group text, and what kind of things are you all talking about on there? Uh, probably shouldn't disclose too much, but uh, no, it's uh, it, it could be anything. It could be logistical stuff. It could just be, hey, what like uh, you know, you hitting balls and you're tracking my numbers, or it could be, you know, it could just be anything. You know, what are you cooking? What are you eating? Uh, just kind of just to get to know each other better. Um, and I'd say we're all pretty vocal in it. Um, you know, it's just not, it's not just one or two people just firing off and annoying the rest of the bunch. We're all pretty, uh, we're all pretty active in it. So that's, uh, that's, that's good. Um, yeah. What kind of beating have you taken? Well, <laughs> there's, uh, uh, been some team members that have, uh, gotten a hold of some old pictures of me and had some fun with them. So, uh. But it's all it's all good banter, and uh, again, just bringing us closer together. All right, we're gonna beam out here. We're gonna start with Aspen Blaker. Aspen, you are with Victor. Go ahead, sir. Hey, Victor, uh, du spiller jo, uh, du har jo både pressetreff og spille med Rory uh, på første spilledag. Uh, det er jo mange som har. Uh, Sett for seg at dere to kan spille sammen på fredag, det er kanskje ikke en tilfeldighet, eller hvordan ser du på akkurat det? Nei, det hadde vært uh, dritkult å spille med, med Rory i, um, i turneringen. Um, selvfølgelig, det er jo første innspillsdag, og vi prøver jo å, å sette litt folk sammen, se hvordan det fungerer. Um, så um, ja, vi får se hvordan det går. Det, det er jo fortsatt noen dager til, til det skjer. Uh, men um, det hadde vært utrolig kult å, å spille med, med han, samt flere uh, nästan alla på laget kunde kunde fint spilt med så det är uh, det är uh, elva andra utroligt bra gutter och 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 ja det kommer att vara en är att spela oavsett. All right, we're going to be joined by Frederick Tombra. Frederick, go ahead sir, you're with Victor. Eh, tack. Eh, du är väl på du har snackat ju väldigt sån sockersött om varandra hela tiden och du får mycket rosa dessa världsstjärnor. Hur är det egentligen att flommas över av så snälla ord? <laughs> Nej, det är ju det är ju hyggligt det. Um, så om man menar att man säger det är väl en annan sak, men um, nei, det är ju det är ju hyggligt att få positiva uh, ord kommande sin väg. Uh, och det är ju nej bara det sanningen är att det Det er veldig hyggelige folk på det laget her, og man har lyst til å være med hverandre, så det, det, det er ikke noe vits å si noe annet. All right, we're going to wrap it up with our friend Herman Fulvik. Herman, go ahead, my friend. Thank you. Eh, Victor, hva er det du suger til deg av disse litt mer rutinerte karene? Hva er det du liksom har lært mest I, og er mest på jakt etter i løpet av disse dagene? Ja, det er jo mest bare at det er mye sånn logistiske ting, altså hva som sker uh, utenom uh, når man spiller uh, golf, for det er jo nesten uh, det enkleste, for det vet man jo, altså spille golf er jo spille golf, uh, men uh, det som sker litt rundt, uh, men også hvordan, uh, hvordan de bare håndterer uh, ting, uh, altså de er, de er så roliga og avslappet, men samtidig så så är er det entusiastiske och och ja har ju spelat Eli har spelat ju sin 11:e detta år och är likväl ja kan kan inte vänta till att liksom spela på på fredag lördag söndag så det ja det är er bara att vara runt folk som har mycket betryggenhet i sig och och bara ja låta det låta det synka in 
All right, Victor. Thank you, sir, for finding We are joined by Mr. Lee Westwood. Lee, thanks for being with us, and welcome to what is your 11th uh, Career Rider Cup. Um, had a terrific career. Um, I have to imagine, though, playing in 11 Ryder Cups now, um, and, and especially in such an era of European team prosperity, that must be one of the, the, the things you hold in the highest regard uh, about your, your own career. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I've, the first time I ever went to watch a, a golf tournament, it was the Ryder Cup at the Belfry in 1989, um, and then again in 1993. Um, I didn't ever go and see the PGA at Wentworth or the British Masters at, at, the Bel at uh, Woburn. The first golf tournament I ever played in, actually, uh, I went to, I actually played in, it was Madeira. So really the 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 sort of best feel for professional golf I ever got was watching, um, you know, the likes of Seve Ballesteros and Ian Woosnam and Nick Faldo and Bernard Langer um, playing at the at the Belfry in the Ryder Cup. So when I did come round to playing in, in 1997, it gave me a real, real feel for it that, you know, this this was the pinnacle of certainly, you know, team golf team sport and, um, you know, nothing really compares to the Ryder Cup, I think. Uh, you know, it's very difficult to make Ryder Cup teams and uh, very special when you do qualify for a team and get to represent Europe. And you've done that well. Thank you. Uh, let's start over here with Mark, number four. Hey, Lee. I'm just curious what you believe makes has made you such a good Ryder Cup player and, and, and I ever follow on that. Uh, I'm a pretty good golfer, Mark. <laughs> um, always helps, doesn't it? Uh, I think, you know, I get on pretty well with everybody. Um, you know, if, if somebody partners me, you know, I'm, I'm pretty straight hitter of the ball. I hit a lot of fairways, hit a lot of greens. That's sort of what my game's been renowned for. Um, you know, I do make putts when I need to, despite what people's opinions might be. Um, I just try and make, you know, playing partners comfortable. And, and let them just do what they're doing. That's that's really what I, I I learned from playing my first one with Nick Faldo. He just let me. He was there to to back me up, and I knew he was always going to be there. And um, you know, just let let your playing partner get off and express themselves. Best player to ever do that playing with me was probably Nicholas Colsarts in his first ever match in a in a Ryder Cup in Chicago, he went out and shot 10 under, um, which was, you know, a, a phenomenal debut. I only came in once that day, but, you know, I like to think that, you know, he just felt comfortable that I was going to be there, you know, if he if he needed me. Thanks, and, and that's just the way I've always tried to be out on the golf course. Are there, are there any common denominators b between yourself and Sergio and Pultz, for example? Because you're three of the, kind of the veteran guys on the group here, and you've all had success. You know, what's your level of respect for those two guys? Yeah, I obviously have a lot of respect for both of them. I think all three of us are very passionate about the Ryder Cup, and uh, you know, we hold it in very high regard. And uh, you know, we give it our all when we're involved. Let's go right next door to number three. Uh, hi, Lee. Uh, hi. Given this is going to be almost an exclusively American crowd like we've not seen before, have you guys done anything different? Or have you personally done anything different to prepare for that? No, not really. Just sort of understand that it is, and nothing's going to change that. And, you know, you just have to deal with it. Um, I'd much rather play in front of... A, you know, a, a crowd that's solely U.S. fans than no crowd at all, like, you know, we experienced last year. Um, you know, pl playing professional golf is all about playing front of, in front of people and entertaining people. Um, and, you know, the majority of the crowds are, are great fun. You know, I've played in, a, in the U.S. most of this year, and I, I get great, great feedback from, you know, the fans. They've watched me grow up out here, and, you know, they really feel like, I guess... They know me now, uh, you know, there's a fam familiarity there and, uh, you know, the, the, the U.S. fans are generally very, very good with me and give me a lot of support. Might be different this week, but, you know, understand that, you know, this is, this is different this week. This is more like a, a football game or, you know, a basketball game where people have picked a side and, you know, you cheer for your side, which, 
you know, I enjoy it. It's what the Ryder Cup's all about. And Rory mentioned a video that you guys watched last night um, and the numbers that you were given. Can you tell us a little bit more about that video, what was in it and what the message was? Yeah, the video is about, you know, the, uh, you know, representing Europe, obviously, and there's 164 players um, that's represented Europe. You have a far greater chance of going into space or climbing Mount Everest than you are, you are representing Europe in the Ryder Cup. So we're, we've all got numbers. Mine's the smallest number, obviously, at 118. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's something to be very proud of, being able to, you know, pull on the clothing with the European team crest on it. Let's go back right, Lee, to David number 11. Hi, Hello, David. Lee. Hello, Lee. How are you? Welcome to America. Thank you. Um, Victor was in here just now, uh, exactly half your age. You're going to be practicing with him this afternoon. When you, when you look at that contrast, does it make you feel, A, old, or B, even more proud of your longevity? Yeah, it makes me proud of my longevity, really, you know. Week in, week out, I play with somebody that's the same age as my son now. So, you know, I'm pretty much used to that. The fact that it was his 24th birthday last week was uh, was a little bit surprising. But, you know, I made my Ryder Cup debut in 1997. I was 24. You know, it's uh, he's he's, um, he's a special golfer, Victor. I enjoy playing with him. Um, you know, he's, uh, I look at his game and, you know, I think there's not a lot of weaknesses to that to that game and, He's he's nice. He's a really nice kid. I would say, you know, credit to his parents for obviously the way he's been brought up. He's just a, a really nice young man, and secondly, he's he's a phenomenal golfer and one that I just enjoy watching and being around. Has he got more in common with your caddy than with you? Yeah, I'd say that they they chat about more things that they can both relate to than uh, than myself and Victor can relate to. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not music. With all that heavy metal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to come over here, number 21, right here. Hey, Lee, uh, another question about being old. I'm sorry, but... Uh, well, I'm not old. I'm at 48. Come on. <laughs> How old are you? Older than that. Well, there you go. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. But... Um, <laughs> Mature. Uh, Can we use the word mature? <laughs> no, actually, mature doesn't apply to me either, so... <laughs> the... Um, in 2018, you were a vice captain, and I'm just wondering kind of if back then uh, were you sort of thinking this might be the end of my playing days? Were you, how did you take all of that, and did you see this coming? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, when you, get, when you become a vice captain, you know, it's uh, first and foremost, I enjoyed being a vice captain. Um, I enjoyed watching the guys play and, you know, obviously performing very well, but it does give you a taste that you want to, still be involved um, but you know as the years go on and you get a little bit older you, you know you don't know when whether you're going to play Ryder Cup again and uh, it, it's obviously nice to be back holding the clubs again rather than other people I said to the lads in the in the team room three years ago I said there's one thing worse than playing Ryder Cup practice rounds and that's watching somebody else do it <laughs> uh, so it's nice to not be watching somebody else do it and, and doing it myself again same direction, 27 in the back. Uh, Lee, the Americans have made a point to cite that their youth is uh, something that's a positive for their team. Yeah. Uh, what do you read into that kind of comment? And um, do you think that is something that could be a, a, a perk coming to the Ryder Cup, being young and maybe unaware? Well, I think it's good that they've got a lot of young players coming through. Um, you know, I think... Golf in general, there's a lot of good young players coming through. You know, we've got players on our side um, that, you know, and, and on our European tour, um, you know, the Hoygaard twins won recently. They're both 21 years of age or 20 years of age or something like that. So there are good young players all around the world. It just so happens that at this moment in time, you know, the United States have got a few good, good young players um, playing for their team this way around. And that's a, you know, that's a balancing, a balancing act, I suppose. You know, do you, because the Ryder Cup's so different, do you go, do you, do you, do you think that experience counts for a lot this week, or do you think, you know, because there's a lot of golf, youth's going to count for a lot this week. I think it's, it's got to be a balance of both. And I think, in an ideal world, you'd like to filter your young players in gradually, you know, a few at a time, not necessarily 
bang all at once and have half your team as, as rookies. Um, but, you know, that just, it happens like that every now and again. And, uh, you know, listen, when I, when I watch, the United, when I look at the United States team, I think that, you know, they've got a lot of strong players and uh, you know, it's, it is almost like a changing of the guard for them. Over on your right, Lee, number seven. Lee, I'm always uh, impressed by the passion of the European team, having covered this event for many years. I'm just curious, back in 97, did Monty or Ollie or someone put their arm around you to tell you how important the Ryder Cup is, or did you know from day one, even before you ever struck a shot in these matches, that this was as important as anything you would do in golf? I knew from day one, really. Um, listen, that week, the captain was Seve Ballesteros. There's nobody, or oh, th there may have been one or two people over many generations been as passionate as Seve about the game of golf. But I doubt there's been many as passionate about the Ryder Cup as Seve was. And he was my captain at the first one. And, you know, he, he, you just fed off him, really. And as, as with Nick Faldo as uh, my partner, you know, Seve and Nick, you know, both hold the, or held the Ryder Cup in high regard. And just being around them, you could see how much it meant to them. So... Passion was never passion for the Ryder Cup was never something that I had to learn or or gain. Pretty much like you know the European team spirit, it's not something we have to work on. It's just there. All right, we've got about three minutes left. Let's go rapid fire. Let's start with number twenty-four right here in the middle. Lee, how long did it take you to get over the the way you, the defeat of twenty sixteen? And do you feel like you have unfinished business this time? Uh. A couple of days, I guess. You know, it's obviously uh, you don't want to be on a losing Ryder Cup team, and I've only been on three out of ten. So, you know, I've I've, I've tasted success more than I've tasted defeat in the Ryder Cup. So, when you go into the Ryder Cup, you <laughs> you have to understand that it's going to come out one or two ways. You're either going to win or you're going to lose. So, you prepare yourself. You you prepare yourself to play the best you can, and and you hope you win. But on the other side of that coin, you might lose. You know, the other team might play better. And, uh, you know, I think the United States team did that week. Um, so you just have to accept that. If you can't accept, accept defeat in sport, then probably shouldn't be playing it, especially as a golfer. 26 and then 20. We'll wrap it up. Uh, Lee, you have a, a bit of a history in the Ryder Cup with uh, American captain Stricker, two four-ball matches and, and a singles match. What do you, do you recollect about those experiences with him that uh, might show us, uh, you know, what these matches, how he carried himself and what these matches might mean to him? Yeah, I think Steve's a gentleman. Um, I've always got on really well with him. Um, we've been sort of been through the same things in a career together. You know, been high up in the world rankings, had slumps, dropped right back down. I remember playing with him in Tigers tournament at, at Sherwood many years ago and we got drawn together and we had, you know, a great conversation on the way around about how we caught, kind of brought ourselves out of the slump and, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's a nice guy. He's, he's the kind of person that, you know, You'd want to sit down and have a beer with. Wrap it up here, number 20, Neil. Uh, hello, Lee. What, what's the best line you've heard from a crowd at a Ryder Cup? Uh, I got called a turd in t Hazeltine in 2016. And uh, that, that's the first time I've been called, turd, called, called a turd since I was about 12 years of age in the playground, I think. So uh, that, that really made me and Billy chuckle, that one. We'll leave it right there. Uh, Mr. Westwood, thank you uh, for being here. And uh, thank have you. a terrific day and week. Cheers. We are joined by Mr. Sergio Garcia. Sergio, welcome. Thank you. Uh, tenth Career Rider Cup. You've hit double digits, my friend. <laughs> um, but the other number I want to ask you about is 25 and a half. All-time leader in this wonderful event in points. I mean, that's a, just an incredible thing. Are, are you, how aware are you of that? And just, um, it blows me away. Do, how does it impact you? And do you take that to the first tee with you Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Mm, no, not really. I don't think that means anything once you step up there. Um, I think, uh, to be totally honest, I, I really wasn't aware until Sunday, uh, three years ago in, in Paris, uh, because it's never been a goal of mine. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm very proud of it. And, uh, and it's something that, uh, you know that obviously I'm gonna I'm gonna have you know at least uh, you know the rest of my life um, personally, but um, 
but uh, once once you step on that first tee, it's it's not about you. You know, it's about the team, and 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 I've always said it. You know, I'd rather go 0 and 5 and win the Ryder Cup than 5 and 0 and and lose it. Uh, and that that's not going to change. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, the most important thing it's uh, is that Europe plays well. Uh, that we uh, we give ourselves a best a best chance to uh, to win the cup, and um, and that's that's the goal. All right, let's hit the floor for some questions. We'll start with Damon this time in seven, then we'll come to Mark. Sergio, when we first saw you in 99, you were running around the golf course like Usain Bolt. When did the Ryder Cup get in your blood? Um, in 95. Uh, yeah, I, was, uh, I remember I was at the Junior Ryder Cup, and uh, we went uh, to watch uh, the practice round at Oak Hill in Rochester. And I remember... Um, Sebi um, grabbed me under the ropes, and, and I think I walked, I think it was the 12th hole, uh, a little bit of the 12th hole, and, uh, you know, we were talking a little bit, and he was explaining things to me. Uh, so that was that was obviously amazing. Uh, I took a picture and stuff. And, and then I remember walked into the International Pavilion and, and saw – some of the European crowds just singing and, and, and the energy, the energy that I, that I felt, I remember as a 15 year old, I was there and I was like, I have to be a part of this at some point in my, in my life. And uh, obviously it came out, it came a lot earlier than I, than I thought in, in 99. But, uh, you know, from that, from that moment on, I, I loved it. And, and then obviously 99 was amazing uh, with, with Jesper. And uh, even though we lost it, uh, you know the way, you know the way the whole week went. It was uh, it just it just felt uh, unbelievable. All right, Mark on number four. <clears throat> hey Sergio, um, just what what in your mind is is has been the secret to your success in this competition? And as a follower to that, is there a common denominator for for guys like Poltz and Lee? You know the veterans on this group, who, all of whom have had a lot of success here. Um, I don't know. Uh, I've obviously had amazing partners, um, so um, I've obviously done some good things myself. But uh, but I've just uh, you know I've just been able to gel nicely with uh, with all the partners that I've uh, that I've had, and uh, we've we've had an amazing time. Uh, I've been very very thankful for that. Um, but I think at the end of the day, like I was saying, you know the main the main goal is is the team and 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 where the team wants to. To head to head to, and uh, and that's that's what we always try. So you kind of put yourself aside uh, for this for this week, and uh, and just uh, enjoy it with uh, with the rest of your teammates and and everyone around. But unrelated follow uh, with what the video that Patty showed you guys with everybody having a number and whatnot. I'm just kind of curious how powerful that is to you, you know, to you guys to have any, you know. It's it's uh, it was very powerful. I didn't know uh, I didn't know my number. I didn't know. I knew that I've always known that that being a part of a Ryder Cup team uh, is very difficult, but I didn't know that uh, only. That little amount of of players have have made it, uh, so that shows you how how difficult it really is. So that's why every time I I I'm a part of a team or or the rest of our teammates, uh, that's why we we give it the um, uh, the respect that it deserves uh, because it's so difficult uh, to be a to be a part of it. So uh, it's uh, it's it's an honor, and uh, you know we we treat it like that. Going to go front right with Jeff. Sure, Joe. You mentioned obviously you've had different partners through the years with the Ryder Cups. I think you partnered Lee maybe seven times. Uh, I don't know if that's right. You, uh, <laughs> how early on do you know if something is going to work or not, and and why would you two mesh so well? Um, no, I mean it, it just uh, I guess chemistry, uh, how how you feel. Um, I mean we've had some some good matches that we won and then we had some some ones that maybe we haven't played as well so um it just comes down to uh how you feel that that week and uh and, and more than anything just kind of being there for your partner uh enjoying enjoying your time with him and uh in the good and the bad and the ugly uh so um just uh just enjoy it it's it's you know as simple as that right here number 20 quick follow Sergio what was your number 120. 120. Okay. And uh, do you does the does Team Europe 
does the Ryder Cup mean more to Team Europe than, than Team USA? I, I can't respond that. I, I don't know how much it means to, to the, I know how much it means to us, but I don't know uh, how much it means to them. Uh, I know that to us it means a lot, and and just being a part of it, it it's it's amazing for us. Um, so, uh, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the only thing I can tell you uh, about it, I guess. And one more, if you don't mind. In 2018, uh, John Rahm defeated Tiger Woods. How, how big do you think that was in his progression to now being world number one? Um, I think it was important for sure, uh, and he, he'll probably tell you about it better. Uh, he, but, but I think he was headed that way anyway. You know, he's just he's just a great player. Uh, you know, he's got he's got all the shots, and and you know, it, it's it's just nice to see uh, as a Spaniard. It's just nice to see how he's evolved and how. You know, obviously he's he's grown up, and uh, and the way um, the way that his game is uh, is is gotten better and better. So it's um, it's nice to see, and uh, you know, you could you could see that he was he was kind of headed that way. Over on the right there, number five. So uh, hey, Sergio, it's a little bit of extension of, of Mark's question, but in terms of uh, you know, regardless of how you're playing, you seem to show up at this event with just remarkable consistency. Uh, this is a, maybe a difficult thing to answer, but how do you take that energy or whatever your feeling is around this event and how much it means to you? How do you convert that into executing shots and making putts? Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, to be totally honest, obviously I've I've had Ryder Cups where I come where I come into them playing really well and 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 I've done well, and then there's Ryder Cups where I've come maybe not feeling quite as well, and I seem to hit a switch when it, when I get here. So obviously the excitement that I get uh, when I come into into the Ryder Cups is uh, it's something that I can't describe it. I can't tell you why it happens, but it happens. Uh, it's just, just love for it. Um, and uh, yeah, it just comes down to challenging yourself uh, every, you know, every match. Uh, it's, um, you know, it's, it's fun uh, to me the energy that you feel around the course and, and uh, not only with the crowds, but with your partners and with your teammates and, and stuff like that. It's it's something very unique and, um, you know, it, it seems to uh, to drive me uh, to to a, to a high level, I guess. And that, that flipping of the switch that you're describing, like when does that happen? Is, that, is it a slow build through the week and then your first match? The kind of uh, goes, or you no, start early? no. It probably starts as soon as you know you're in the team. Um, obviously, it, it grows as as you get closer to to uh, crunch time and and Friday morning or Friday afternoon, whenever you're gonna play. But obviously, Friday morning when when everything starts, uh, that's when it starts hitting uh, you know the, the the highest point. But uh, but it just kind of builds up as soon as you know that you're in the team. You know, it's it's exciting and and you know I've been. Like last week, uh, with uh, you know practicing and stuff, and you know every morning I will wake up and uh, I will turn to my wife Angela and I'll say, okay, you know, we're getting closer. We're getting closer to going to the Ryder Cup. So uh, it's uh, it's always uh, it's always such a such a fun thing. Sergio, we're gonna beam out to Paolo Passiani. Paolo, you are with Sergio. Go ahead, sir. Paulo, can you hear us? You're there. Okay. No. Thanks, Paulo. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go to Juan, who's going to ask some questions in your native language. All right. Bueno, Sergio, ayer hablábamos un poco con, con, con el capitán, con Patrick, de, de la importancia que tener la experiencia que tú tienes y la experiencia de Lee, por ejemplo, en el equipo, sure. ¿no? Y, y al final, que has estado en nueve, has jugado nueve Ryder Cups, has estado en diez, siete victorias de Europa, todo esto tiene importancia, ¿no? Y intimida un poco, ¿no? Sí, eh, obviamente yo creo que es, eh, todo, ese, es, todo ese tipo de cosas son importantes, eh, pero, pero bueno, luego eh, el viernes por la mañana el Tiel 1 eh, está muy bien, pero eso eh, empiezas de cero, ¿no? Entonces hay que darse cuenta de que eh, los americanos no te van a regalar un hoyo porque, oh, no, has ganado tantas Raid Cups, o has jugado tantas, ah, pues mira, este y otro damos, no, eso no, no funciona así, ¿no? Pero, pero bien, eh, siempre, es, siempre es bonito eh, tener eh, un, un buen historial en, en, eh, en un evento como este, eh, y bueno, pues eh, lo importante es seguir, eh, seguir ayudando al equipo. 
Oye, hablando de la experiencia también, hablaba con, con Holland y con otros jugadores, ¿no? Que ya mucho tiempo jugando en Estados Unidos, tienen como la gente les apoya cuando van en PG Tour y tal, y de repente llegan aquí y se encuentran con que esto no va a pasar. ¿no? Entonces, y además creo que somos muy poquitos españoles aquí esta semana, no sé si viene alguien contigo. Entonces, ¿cómo, cómo compensas eso? ¿Cómo, cómo haces? ¿no? No, bueno, eso eh, obviamente eh, lo hemos hablado eh, entre, entre nosotros y tal, pero sabes que es así, eh, no, no, hay, no hay más tu tía, es, es tan, tan sencillo como eso. Eh, lo bueno es que eh, esa energía de, del público eh, la puedes utilizar a tu favor también, aunque, aunque no sea hacia ti, eh, tú la puedes utilizar a, a tu favor y sabiendo que, eh, y es una de las cosas que, que, coment, que le comenta a, a algunos de los rookies, eh, si el campo está callado es bueno, eso es bueno para nosotros en Estados Unidos, significa que estamos haciendo cosas buenas, eh, no significa que no está pasando nada. O sea, normalmente si no, hay, si, no hay, eh, si no hay aplausos o no hay mucha cosa, es que normalmente el, los europeos lo estamos haciendo bien y entonces está calladito. Eso, eso eh, es importante que ellos sepan que, que, que es bueno para nosotros, eh, para que no se crean que uf, no está pasando nada, qué pasa y tal. ¿No? Entonces, bueno, eh, todo ese tipo de cosas siempre es bueno que, que lo sepan eh, jugando aquí en Estados Unidos y bueno, pues eh, hay que intentar eh, eh, apro aprovecharse de todos esos momentos. Y muchos han mencionado a Seve esta semana, por supuesto, y hay una historia de la Ryder que además es Seve y Chema juntos, ¿no? Y esa, ese papel como de hermano mayor que tenía Seve con Chema. ¿Tú crees que con John está empezando a pasar eso y, y puede ser alguna energía que funcione esta semana y en el futuro? Sí, eh, sin ninguna duda. Eh, obviamente eh, veremos a ver qué ocurre, eh, a ver si eh, jugamos o no juntos esta semana. Eh, sería bonito, pero, pero bueno, al final final de cuentas lo importante es lo que sea mejor para el equipo y, y si bueno eh, perdón, si, si el capitán y los vicecapitanes creen que, eh, que podemos ayudar al equipo mejor estando separados pues eh, lo haremos de esa manera eh, si creen que, que podemos ayudar más eh, jugando juntos pues eh, encantados y, y bueno pues a disfrutar los, los dos juntos ¿no? eh, entonces veremos a ver, a ver qué ocurre bueno y la última hablando de lo de la experiencia un poco, y te decía lo de hermano mayor, ¿no? ¿Tienes un poco esa sensación de que te, poca, te toca un poco, o tienes una labor un poco de hermano mayor con el equipo y un poco guiarles y calmarles y hacer sí, estas claro. cosas? ¿no? Sí, sin ninguna sí. duda, pero no solo yo, ¿no? Yo creo que, como bien has dicho tú, pues Ian, eh, eh, Westwood, Rory, eh, Rory lleva unas cuantas también. Entonces, eh, es importante que, eh, que todos pongamos de nuestra parte, ¿no? Y todos pongamos nuestro nuestro hombrito para que eh, si alguno lo necesita, pues venga y cualquier cosa que sea, ¿no? Comentario, eh, confianza, eh, un abrazo en el momento que, que toca. Entonces hay que, hay que estar ahí para, para todo ese tipo de cosas. ¿Y cómo de a gusto estás en la raíz? Pues te veo encantado. Sí, bien. Obviamente pues ya sabemos todos eh, lo que me motiva este, eh, este evento y, y bueno, pues eh, muy contento de, de poder ser parte de, de otro. Bien, gracias. Venga. Gracias. Good. Appreciate it. Have a good day. De nada. Gracias. We're here at Whistling Straits, and we're joined by European Captain Padraig Harrington. Uh, Captain, uh, I'm going to take the leap of faith and assume you've been out on the golf course the last few hours. What are your initial impressions of what you're seeing out there and what your your troops are, are experiencing and, and saying about uh, the layout? Yeah, I came up here about eight weeks ago now, had a look at the golf course, and uh, So we knew what to expect. It's uh, it's in great condition. Uh, it's set up, as I said, reasonably generous uh, off the tee, and and not that it's set up this way, but the type of golf course it is is very difficult at times around the green. So nothing. It's exactly as expected. It's exactly as we were aware. Uh, obviously, it's interesting playing a practice round at the moment, knowing that the wind's going to change to a different direction at the weekend. But uh, you know. These guys are professional players. They know what to do. They've been doing it all their life, so they can figure it out. Was there anything different that you remember, have seen here that you remember from when you played in PJ Championships here? I, as I said, I've been back a couple of times since then. Uh, so, not really, no. I think there's a certain uh, flow and style to the golf course, and it, it doesn't matter whether you shorten the 11th and shorten the 1st or anything like that. The, the golf course has its own... Uh, own feel and, and that's still there for sure so yeah very similar to 2015. Okay Let, let's begin uh, evidently Steve would like to go number 22. <laughs> Patrick where did you come up with the idea for the numbers video that is getting some buzz? 
Uh, this has been done before uh, in, in Europe. I think certainly the, the Lions were famous for starting it out. Uh, and it was obviously, when you're looking for these teams, this is a, a theme that the European Tour came up with. And, and I was very comfortable and happy to, to, to buy into it and, and believe in it. And it's, it's really worked out very nicely, uh, as you would have seen in the video. But just looking at the, like we have a wall with the, hall, with the role of fame of who've played and being able to look at those names and go through it. 164, it's just startlingly small amount of players. Uh, obviously, you can blame Lee Westwood for that, for playing 11 times, like, and, 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 and Sergio as well. But yeah, it, it's, a, it's a small group of people. When you, you, you know, when you think 580 people have gone to space and uh, 5,870 people have climbed Mount Everest, it, it, it's incredible that there's so few who have played in the Ryder Cup. And, uh, it makes it very special uh, for the players to know that they have a place in history. It can never be taken away from them. They will always have a name on that wall. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, for me, myself, I've, I'm, I'm up there, 121. Uh, so it's, it's, it's nice for me to look back and remember, uh, kind of remember the person I was, you know, as a Ryder Cup player. And for these current players, obviously they're experiencing it. Uh, you know, the three rookies... It was it was extra special for them to to be added in, and they they you know had their moment to stand up and 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 kind of uh, uh, received the applause of everybody that they're that they're new to this. So it was a it was a lovely uh, a lovely way to start the week. We have more. All right, over on your right, number five. Go ahead, Padraig. Do you and Steve have any agreement or contingencies in place in case any player? Uh, shows up with a COVID issue? Yes, there is a, there's lots of protocols. Uh, I, I assume the captain's agreement is public, is it? Yeah, so there's like, just like an injury name in the envelope, there's a COVID name in the envelope. Uh, it's still, while we've asked, it's still not completely clear whether, what happens when we have, if, God forbid, we had a, a COVID outbreak of a number of players, but for one player, it's pretty straightforward. Obviously, the first two days, it, it's, you know, four players sit out, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, you know, so there's no issues on those two days, but obviously on Sunday, uh, you know, you start losing a few players to COVID, it, it, it does affect uh, the match in some way. So, but one is in a COVID envelope for sure. We're going to go to seven right behind them. Uh, you mentioned the wind. Would would you like to see it blow quite strongly once the match starts? You know, we're we're, we're all golfers, and you know, you know, somebody like myself who's been brought up and traditionally in a windy, linksy store. We like a bit of wind, but you know, we're, we're not asking for it to be, you know, everybody blown off the golf course. Uh, so a little bit to test us. What was there today was very nice, uh, but we're not, you know. I've got a group of great ball strikers. I don't want them blown off the golf course. So uh, I'm very comfortable with what we saw today, but not looking for any more. Uh, and I think my guys are good enough anyway. If there was no wind, as I said, they're, they're familiar playing golf around the world. Uh, and the quality of their ball striking is, is, is right there. So, uh, no, we're not depending on a windy week at all. Right behind me, Rex, number 20. Just to follow up on Eamon's question, so if on Sunday, if you had more than one player go down with either injury or COVID, you're still not sure how that would be handled? No, there's an injury envelope, there's a COVID envelope. Uh, we haven't quite clarified exactly what the position is, how many is too many uh, with, with COVID, no. So there would be more than one player's name in, in the there's COVID? There's an injury envelope and there's a COVID envelope. So that's two separate envelopes at this stage. Maybe the same name as in both envelopes. So uh, that, that's as far as I'm aware at, at this moment. And uh, while the other issue is actually quite a, a detailed and complicated issue and is possibly above the pay grade of the two captains, uh, you know, how many would be, how many... And this is why we have the COVID protocols. It's not like it's an individual event, whereas if you lost a player in an individual event, while it's, it's not great, it's certainly you, you don't want to be catching COVID, but in a team environment, you don't want a number of people catching COVID because it affects the actual, uh, the actual match. So this is uh, certainly something that uh, I'm sure that the, is 
causing a lot of thought and uh, and uh, a lot of time thinking about what, what what would be too many and what would be sustainable. But again, it's not really for 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 the captains. It's more for the the, the running of the event. Straight back again, Jeff, number twenty-three. Uh, uh, I was going to ask about how the practice round went, but but on the COVID issue, are you? Um, how do you decide who um, goes in that, and is the person required to be uh, in the envelope on site? Are they a uh, assistant captain? Um, yeah, well, it's, it's the exact same as an injury envelope. The person who goes in the envelope, the captain decides, uh, and nobody ever knows. Uh, you know, and we hope that stays the way. But we've had a few injury pullouts over the year, uh, so it'd be just very similar to that. No, no real difference in in how it works. Uh, as I said, it, it is possible that you could have two different names. I, I, I don't see why that would be the case. Uh, but you could have somebody pull out with an injury. You could have somebody with COVID. So, yeah, you have to be prepared for these things. And uh, as I said, it's been there all along. So it's it's nothing really new. It's obviously highlighted because of COVID, but there's always been a name in the envelope for an injury. Just like, you know, coming into this, we were asked to be aware that, you know, having somebody as a, as a reserve, uh, you know, somebody as a backup, uh, who you would bring along and, and what happens if somebody pulls if somebody pulls out because of COVID because, you know, it, it's something that could happen in, in these times. On your left, uh, captain number 19. So, Patrick, you, you talked yesterday about Seve. Sergio was here this morning. Um, do you think Sergio with John Ram could have the same energy that was with Seve and Chema at some point and the same kind of success? Uh, wouldn't I love that? Uh, that would be, uh, yeah, you know, it's hard to believe that you could have the same energy as, as Seve and, and Jose over the years. Uh, I think the biggest picture in our, in the champions locker room is of Seve and, uh, and and Jose. So, yeah, they're, they're iconic when it comes to the Ryder Cup in Europe. Uh, I wouldn't ask anybody to live up to that. Uh, but if they came close, it would be nice. Uh, you know, and, and certainly... Uh, yeah, that would be an interesting uh, partnership that maybe I should think about. Thanks, thanks for the advice. Do you think it's an extra incentive for the European team to, to have guys playing together for their country, not just for the team? No, I, I don't go in for that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, that's, that was something that was done, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Oh, two guys from the same country, they should play together. No, if they're the right partnership... Uh, in terms of if their if their game suit, if they are at the right time in their careers, uh, you know, when I started out, I played with Paul McGinley in the World Cup, and we won the World Cup very early on, 1997. By 2001, we couldn't we could hardly we couldn't play together. We were so bad as a partnership because the dynamic in 97, he was clearly the captain of the, of, of of that ship, and I did everything I was told. Uh, by 2000 and 2001, you know, I, I'd matured as a golfer and there was a little bit of, of, of friction about, oh, I, I think we should do it this way. And uh, But then again, we, we came good again in the Ryder Cup because things moved on. So it, it, it's just not automatic just because you're, you've got the same background, same, same uh, you know, it can come down to just the age profiles and the, the timing of their career, whether they're a great partnership or not. Straight across here, number four, Michael. Thank you, John. Uh, Patrick, you've been around Steve. You've known Steve Stricker a long time. Uh, can you cite something memorable you've seen him do and something memorable you've heard him say? Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I clearly I've, I've known Steve a long, long time. Uh, I think what's most memorable what, when you think of Steve is he's a nice guy. But he's tough on the golf course. You know, you you, it, 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 you got to remember what's be, what's behind that. He's he's a perfect gentleman. He's he's exactly how you would want a golfer. Uh, he's somebody who goes out there, plays his golf strong, real tough out there, but is is very straight about it. Uh, I think the fact that he came back uh, from the driver yips in the late nineties, you know, that's. That says everything about a person. You know, golf is, is a pretty tough game, but when you when you know when you get a setback like that, that really knocks you. To be, come back and be a world class player after that uh, is a very impressive uh, person and golfer. Again, on your right, number five. <coughs>
Patrick, Brooks Kepka recently in an interview made it sound like playing in the Ryder Cup is a bit of an inconvenience, whereas Rory came in here and said that, that, that we get along, we play for each other. Do you have a theory on why it comes more naturally for the European side? I think in Europe we, we, we definitely have a very common goal. Uh, I alluded to this yesterday, you know, it's very much the Ryder Cup is, is our way of asserting Europe's position in world golf, uh, the European tourist position. I think that was Seve's goal back in the 80s and we carried that on. Uh, and I think that brings us together. Uh, I think we obviously work very hard, uh, things like the Make It Count video and, and the numbers to create that atmosphere. Uh, you know, so it, it's just something that we, we we want to do, we're keen to do. I think it also helps that some way when we travel a lot, uh, you know, from outside of Europe, maybe just to the, to the States or to other places, there's somewhat of a, you know, we're outsiders and we're, we're again trying to prove ourselves. So I, I think there is an element of, of, of all of that put in together that we've, we're here to... to you know, give credibility, I suppose, to the to the European tour and the European players, and we definitely have the, as I said, we definitely have the ground, the ground roots of Europe behind us. You know, everybody in Europe, starting out to start of the year in the European tour, believes they have a chance of making the team, and you know that really is when you have that sort of support, uh, it's easier for the team to to work together, uh, play together, and and to be honest, as I said, you know. My team at the moment, they're just in the, in the, like, it's, the atmosphere is exactly where you would want it. Uh, literally, I don't want to mess it up from here. That's, that's why I'm sort of at this position. So, yeah, it's not just me, though. It's all our Ryder Cups, all the past, starting. I, I, we, we tend to look back to Seve. Obviously, it started before Seve, but we, we, Seve is, is the one we, we will use. All those teams gone before us has led to this situation, and the players know how important it is uh, to play in the Ryder Cup, to play and win the Ryder Cup, and how important it is to be. Uh, look, they just love being a team too. You know, they, I, I, a lot of a lot of I. Uh, this might be an interesting one too. Like you know, a lot of the guys on my team. You know, a lot of the Europeans. They seem to want to be team players. You know, what they, you know, Shane Lowry thought he was going to be a Gaelic footballer. Sergio thought he was going to be a soccer player. So a lot of them have that team background that they, they uh, nearly crave more so than the golf. So this is their opportunity for it. Uh, and like, you, you look at somebody like Sergio, uh, he continually going around to the players and just having a quiet word and doing saying things behind. Like he just. Nobody relishes being in this team more than more than Sergio, and what he does behind the scenes, just just is really very special. Scott on number one, Patrick, you you've leaned very heavily on the shoulders of some very experienced players uh, that are the bulk of your team. Do you see uh, young guys on this team that are being groomed to take over that role? Uh, and who can naturally step into that when these other guys that you know who've been doing it for so long are gone? I, I do believe there is a nice natural succession in Europe. Uh, the players I see in the middle of their careers now, just probably less, just slightly less in the middle of their careers to the middle of their careers, they've got great role models in the experienced players, and they see what they do. Uh, and yeah, I, I think Europe is in a very strong place going forward uh, in terms of of that. There is a nice. You know, clearly we have the top end experience, but there's a nice succession coming along. Players who are prepared, who want to take responsibility, uh, and want to want to have that leadership role, uh, whether it's just in their their foursomes or four ball match, or or in a in a bigger situation in the whole team. We're going straight across again, number three, Daniel. Without divulging any state secrets or, going to. or specifics. How many of your, uh, your pairings decisions are, are locked by now, or how many are based on what you kind of see and feel in the practice rounds this week? Uh, some people play well in practice. Some people don't play well in practice. You can't, you can't pick guys after three years and, and expect the practice rounds to determine uh, what goes on on the Friday. So, no, I, I'm not a great believer in, in, in judging people off uh, a couple of relaxed days practice. Uh, so no, our, our, we, 
my picks are, are definitely based on, on the right partnerships, uh, what we would have had in mind, but narrowed down now. And, and, and uh, as we've got here, narrowed down even further. So I wouldn't think a lot is changing in my head and my vice captain's head between now and Friday, no. Number eight, Phil. Uh, I was going to ask you something very similar, Podrick, so this leads nicely into it. Can you think, of, therefore, of an example from, as a player or in your experience as a player or vice captain where a pairing has come out of completely left field late on in the Good. week? It, uh, oh, plenty. My first Ryder Cup in 99, uh, I, uh, I got told late Thursday uh, that I was playing foursomes with Miguel Angel Jimenez, like, and that really was... It was an afterthought because Jose had uh, Jose felt he wasn't playing well enough. They were going to play the two Spanish t together, and Jose didn't feel like he was playing well enough for foursome. So I was thrown in there late. So very, very you know, and that really was late. Uh, I said it was late Thursday uh, or Thursday afternoon, not far off when the team was going in. So there's, there's been plenty of incidents like that over the years. Uh, I don't think it happens as much now, uh, but. Clearly, circumstances, lots of things can happen in, in terms of circumstances. So that's why the team sheet goes in uh, Thursday evening, just to allow for those th those changes. But I think mine and the vice captains, we're pretty set at this stage, and we, we have a fair idea of what we want and, and, and what we what role we want each player to play. Obviously, I can, I can go back and look up the result, but did you win? Uh, we were pretty good, yeah. I, I I think we got a half point the first morning. Uh, disappointing, we were a very tight match second day and, and lost, uh, but we were actually a good partnership, yes. But he did, no, he didn't actually. I, he hit the first tee shot, which is always a very nice thing for, I think we were both rookies too, so that was uh, an interesting one. Okay, I think we're gonna hit one more here, number six, go ahead. Oh yeah. Uh, Rory was in here earlier saying that he thought it has become progressively harder to win a Road Rider Cup. The stats may seem to bear him out. I think 2004 was the last time a visiting team had a lead going into Sunday. Um, obviously, Medina kind of flipped things around. Do you agree with what Rory said? And if so, what's the reason? Why is it getting harder? I think, uh, obviously, you've got the fans. Uh, I think more to do with the home setup is 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 a big part of it. Clearly, the home captain gets a choice on how the golf course is set up, and he he's going to do everything he can in that setup to get it to favour his players. Uh, so I think that has a big effect on it, to be honest. Just just really the setup of the golf course, and and you know you can set a golf course up to be tough, or you can set a golf course up to be you know loads of birdies, as in any week on the on, on tour. So. But the home captain gets to make that decision, and I think it has a big influence. I think if you are coming, uh, you know, be, traditionally, certainly it would be tough to beat the, the, the U.S. on their home-style golf course. And, and as we've done in Europe, we've shown it's pretty damn hard to be us uh, if we're picking one of our courses that's naturally suited to our game. So it really is about picking the right venue and also then, uh, uh, you know, styling that golf course to suit your players. Follow up, are the players that different now? I mean, the game is so global. Uh, I, I would suggest not anymore. They, they, they are merging much more into a, you know, much more so I, I think they're the best players in Europe are, are the same as the best players in the world, is the same as the best players in the States. So it's not like it's, it, it, it's not as different. But in 99, I, I, I had to be introduced or, Payne Stewart introduced himself to me. I'd never, I'd never met him. So, you know, and there was others in the team like that. So, uh, that's not the case now. Players are very familiar nowadays, and familiar games that have played all the conditions, uh, you know, that can be presented. But, you know, there's still a difference in terms of, uh, you know, you can play as much links golf as you like, but you you never compete quite as well as as somebody who was brought up playing that way. So, there is there is that natural element that's I'd say natural, it's that element that's been learnt over a long time that is going to play into the hands of a home team, uh, per se. Thank you. Captain, thanks so much for your time today. We'll look forward to speaking with you again tomorrow. Thank you.